Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the first how-to-play video, at least ship-wise, for the Pan-Asian Destroyer line. This is the Tier 2 Longjiang class of destroyers. The Longjiang class of destroyers... Uh, didn't exist. <laughs> uh... At least as far as I can tell, anyway. Wargaming claims that in 1913 this destroyer was ordered from Germany in order to re reinforce the Republic of China, China's Navy with up-to-date ships. They were never built, but are designed to form the basis for the German V-25 class of destroyers. And I can see why. Uh, in fact, this ship is basically a, you know, asset reproduction copy-paste of the V-25 with only some minor tweaks. So if you're interested in the history of the V-25 class of destroyer or torpedo boat, go and check out my video on the V-25 that released two days ago. Um, there's no service history because none of these were built, so we're going to skip straight into the in-game play style. And there's a couple things that you need to know about the Pan-Asian Destroyers. Zero of them, at least non-premium-wise, have normal torpedoes. So all the Tech Tree Pan-Asian Destroyers have what are called deep water torpedoes. And the deep water torpedoes basically can hit every ship in the game with the exception of Destroyers. And the trade-off for that is that the torpedo's detection range is extremely short. In the case of most of them, it's going to be 0 0.08. However, on Longjiang, it is actually 1.1 kilometers, which is mildly interesting. Uh, if I remember correctly, V25, I'll go find it here, did not have this same detection range. I think it was less. In fact, it is. So, uh, same torpedo-ish, <laughs> deep water, but worse detection range. Wargaming? Clarification? <laughs> um, I guess this is technically a slightly different torpedo. So, anyway, these ships, can, or these torpedoes normally have a lower detection range than the torpedo that they would otherwise fire. Longjiang is actually the exception to that rule, and it's mildly interesting to that, and I'm sure as we go up this line, we'll find other discrepancies. What you need to know is that by the time you get to Tier 8, 9, and 10, Tier 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, that goes away, and you will have a 0.8 kilometer detection range, which is ridiculous if the torpedo is fast enough, which it is at Tier 10. Um... So in terms of in-game play style, the ship actually plays similar to the V-25 in that it has good detection, good speed, good turning radius, good rudder shift time. It plays like a glorified PT boat. However, it's down two torpedo launchers to single torpedo launchers to the V-25. So not only does it get worse torpedoes, it, or, well, yeah, worse torpedoes, it gets less of them. So you would think that this would actually get made up for in terms of the gunnery. Unfortunately, it doesn't. In fact, this ship has basically the same exact stats as the V-25 does and gains absolutely nothing. We don't gain an additional gun. We don't gain better torpedoes. We don't even get better firing arcs. In fact, we get worse firing arcs. This second turret right here... Uh, it really requires you to expose a lot of the side of the ship to actually use it. What the ship does have as an advantage over the V-25 comes in the form of the smoke consumable, and it is the Pan-Asian Destroyer smoke, which is uh, active for 70 seconds, is like deploying actively for 30 seconds, but it takes 76 seconds to reload, which means by the time that the smoke dissipates, you have six seconds at the shortest amount of time before your smoke generator comes back up. So this thing can almost permanently smoke up in one spot if it wanted to. So that's one other thing about it. So with this, the ship does play surprisingly similar to V-25 in that basically it's a glorified PT boat. It's fast, it's maneuverable, it's got a very small profile, and is hard to hit, which means that you can do lots of fun things with it. 
Add in the fact that at Tier 2 and Tier 3, Battleship Captains, generally speaking, don't have a firm grasp on it, uh, on the, the whole WASD thing, and this thing can be an absolute menace, much in the same way that V-25 can. Of course, <laughs> there's a downside. Not being able to hit destroyers with your torpedo with the torpedoes means that you have to rely on the guns to gun them down. And as many of you guys saw in my V-25 video, I'm really not enamored with this gun mount. Uh, it doesn't seem to do a whole lot of damage with HE, and the AP tends to overpen all of the things. And we'll get to see a little bit of that in the battle video. And so, I'm overall, I'm kind of meh with this ship. It's not really a, a fantastic ship. I think the V-25 is a much better ship. Um, it is what it is, I guess. I'm, I'm glad that the grind through this is extremely short so that people who are grinding through this can get through relatively quickly. I did play enough battles with enough camos to get this captain up to six points, so caveat emptor on the torpedo reload time when we get to the stats. So let's go ahead and let's cover the stats right away. 7,700 hit points. Sounds awfully familiar. Up to nine millimeters of armor. The literal tin can. <laughs> Artillery, we have three single 105 millimeter guns. They have an eight and a half kilometer range, a four second reload, 18 second, 180 degree turn time, 1200 HE shell damage, five and a half fire percent chance, 2300 AP shell damage on a citadel, and what seems like a pretty high level of, um, it seems like a pretty high level of penetration. But uh, in, in practice, it's basically only useful for dealing with the cruisers out there. Uh, it's really not very useful against destroyers. It's also not very useful against battleships. Uh, even the superstructures of battleships, it doesn't seem reliable enough to me. Uh, torpedo tubes. We have two twin 500 millimeter uh, torpedo tubes, 8.4 kilometer range, which is a change from the V-25s. I think it's like six, somewhere in that range. 49 knot speed, 9,233 damage, so not a whole lot of damage, but reloads in 28.8 seconds, and that's going to be with torpedo armament expertise on the captain. Uh, it's going to be a little bit slower than that if you don't have a six-point captain on it. Like I said, I played enough games that I was able to get to six points on this captain starting from three. So uh, it is a pretty fun ship to play, but I think the V-25 overall is a little bit better. Max speed, 37.8 knots. That's going to be with the speed flag if we remove it. It should drop down to 36. And the turning circle radius of 440 meters, 2.1 second rudder shift time. Concealment range by sea of 5.2 kilometers. By air, 2.5 kilometers. And very stealthy ship, especially... <laughs> I could see this becoming a dedicated seal clubber if for whatever reason the V-25 was just completely uninteresting to you. Personally, of the two, I would think the V-25 would be the more, would be the better, more versatile seal clubber, if that's what you're interested in doing. Uh, so that would be my recommendation if you're going to put a time point captain on anything, but I suppose it could work with this too. In terms of upgrades, uh, main armaments mod one is the one that I'm running. We only have two choices here. Main armaments mod one. Uh, twenty percent reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated, plus fifty percent to their hit point pool, and minus twenty percent to the time it takes to repair them. If you're out of detonation flags and you're absolutely petrified of getting detonated in a game, magazine mod one will give you basically the same effect. It's a little bit less. It's a seventy percent reduction in the chance of your magazine getting detonated, and that's also a viable option. You will notice that this ship does not have AA guns, and at Tier 2, it actually shouldn't be seeing any carriers unless you division with a Tier 3, then you could get yourself stuck into a Tier 4 match, or a Tier 3, Tier 4 match. Uh, this ship would actually probably do reasonably well in those matches if the carrier ignores their existence, but it has zero recourse against them, even less than the V-25's already terrible anti-aircraft suite. So that's uh, this ship basically <laughs> in the port. Let's go look at it in a battle video. All right, so the Longjiang 
Uh, like I said, it plays like a V25. You just have to remember that you're not able to actually target or launch torpedoes against any destroyers. And this match, there's no shortage of cruisers and battleships to shoot at. And at these tiers, generally speaking, I find that even cruiser players can sometimes fall into the trap of not having enough WASD hacks in order to avoid torpedoes. But you do have an 8.4 kilometer torpedo range to work with, which is only a tenth of a kilometer shorter than your um, gun range. So if you can hit it with your guns, you can hit it with torpedoes. Actually, you can hit things with torpedoes further out than your guns by launching them at things that are coming towards you. And uh, this video, this video is going to to show quite a lot. Um, so the, the, hence the reason why I chose it, obviously. But uh, the map is Archipelago, Archipelago. Yeah, however, however you want to say that word. It, to me, it's Archipelago, but some people it's different. Uh, we're going to look at these gun arcs real quick. You can see, uh, got the guns traversed, but focusing on the sea cap at the moment, trying to get there. Uh, overall, really not that great arcs due to that second turret's uh, limiting factor being the front of the ship. And kind of an interesting looking little ship there, but uh, here we, we're going to get to the gun arc. And you can see we lose it there. Now, oop. <laughs> You lose it very, very easily. Um, you you really have to expose about 30 degrees or so uh, to actually get the, the second battery in there. And that kind of hampers you, especially compared to the V-25, which has ridiculously good gun arcs plus ridiculously good torpedo arcs. Um, so I'm a little confused by this, but hey, you know, it is what it is. So we're up here at the sea cap. And there is some smoke over there. I'm just, I'm launching some torpedoes. Uh, I don't anticipate hitting anything, but it's more or less just area denial. And these things come up so quick. You can see it's like 30 seconds or so uh, uh, for the torpedoes to come up. Really not a detriment to launch these. Plus at this early part, if we end up running into an enemy destroyer, I can't use them against the destroyer anyway. So I gotta gun them down and pray that the umikaze that's behind me decides to either get really good with the torpedoes or um, can actually uh, do some real work there. So once again, launching some torpedoes at the Yuri in there, more or less just kind of, uh, uh, I realize we're probably not going to hit him. It doesn't truthfully matter to me. He's far enough away that I, the torpedoes are probably going to run out before they get there. But, you know, sometimes you get lucky and they turn right into them. So that's really what those torpedoes were about. We do have a Wix that is coming up that we do need to be aware of. Seven kilometers out, so he's far enough out that we've got plenty of time to react to his position. I mean, we've got over a kilometer and a half's worth of range. And you can see there, if you target something that you can't hit, it will tell you that you cannot hit it with those deep water torpedoes. And there's really nothing wrong with, uh, you know, launching torpedoes into smoke and stuff, especially if you've seen cruisers coming into that smoke. Now you can see here, We've got our torpedoes. We went ahead and we popped them. 5.6k out. We're still not detected by this Yurian. And that's fine by me, but we're going to we're going to violate that here because we've also got some pretty strong smoke. Now, the French cruisers are particularly susceptible to HE at this low tier. Ooh, might actually get lucky with those torpedoes. Uh, no. Okay. And they're also reasonably susceptible to AP. However, you can see here, we're not doing a whole lot of damage. About a thousand damage per salvo there. 396, that's pretty bad too. And we're gonna launch another set of torpedoes here just in case. We do have plenty of time left in our smoke. Uh, we've also got this island here, which is most likely going to foil this Wix attempt to launch torpedoes at me. Interestingly enough, though, this Wix gets in front of the Urien, and I really thought that maybe, just maybe, I'd get lucky and the Urien would, would end up eating a bunch. But at this point, we're not able to be hit by the Wix torpedoes, so we're just going to sit here and we're going to continue to try and gun down this Urien. And you can see here, well, we got torpedoes that are moving around. Okay, so down he goes. Wix is coming around the bend. Well, maybe he'll start running away. 
In terms of overall map positioning and stuff, the ship has enough speed at this tier. Okay, so there's the torpedoes. The ship has enough speed at this tier to where it's really not too much of an issue. Ooh, Chester eating a torpedo there. Uh, it has enough speed where this isn't really an issue for this ship to, to you know, get into a combat situation on the corner of the map and get back into the fight. It can do that quite easily. So there you can see we did 1,000 follow, well, 1,100 followed up by 600, followed up by just enough to kill him with 282. Narvik there looking like he might have eaten a tor might eat a torpedo, but he manages to escape. So now we're going to head back down towards the middle. You can see, ooh, he launched torpedoes at me. That was clever of him. We've got this Nassau here in the in the middle. There is a Dresden there as well. Both of them can be hit by deep water torpedoes. And really hoping for that turkey sandwich, because let's be honest here, the turkey sandwich looks delicious. It's a, it's a battleship and I'm in a destroyer. This is like the quintessential target for this. Um... Low tier matches, they tend to be pretty fast paced. Now, this one actually went quite a long time. I was legitimately surprised by just how long it actually took to complete. I think the vast majority of the reason for that is because of the uh, the fact that our team kind of melts a little bit and then comes back and then melts and then comes back. Here you can see I'm trying to, to shoot at him more or less just for the sake of causing annoyances. Maybe I can bait out a fire, which would be amazing. Well, I was going to stop behind the island and shoot at him, but we lost spotting. Our Samson unfortunately died. Uh, claimed by the German battleship. So we're going to go get our own little revenge here. And you can see the differences in torpedo arcs between the uh, between this and the V-25. Uh, launch, yeah, I was going to say, you better launch those a little bit further forward than that. Of course, going to pop our smoke here, and he disappears. <laughs> Really hoping that that Chester comes out. Well, we, we started him on fire and we got a Defend Ribbon. So one of two things is going to happen. He's either going to uh, repair that and eat a bunch of torpedoes, which we can only hope, or he will remain invisible. Okay, so the torpedoes are going out. And, ooh, two Defends. Can we get torpedo hits? No, <laughs> doesn't look like we're going to get one. Uh, I think this is what uh, most Japanese destroyer captains would describe as our torpedoes are too easily spotted. <laughs> These torpedoes are really slow compared to Japanese torpedoes, though, so I'm even less believing of that. Uh, trying to gauge what he's going to do, there's a Chester here, so I really don't anticipate him doing too much in the way of maneuvering. So we're going to launch these torpedoes basically straight into his path. And maybe this time we'll get some torpedo hits on him. Up to 17,600. Oh, we're still going up. 17,816 damage. And, oh yes, our smoke ran out. And you can see here, uh, because this was... Oh, we got the torpedo hit. You can see that because this is a... Uh, Ooh, a really bad place to beach ourselves. Because our uh, smoke cloud was deployed in reverse we didn't really get much in the way of opportunities to to enjoy the smoke cloud in its fullest so we're going to use the island instead at least briefly here the st louis is not cooperating though it would have been nice for him to kind of make a turn and right into those torpedoes and because we have a 5.2 kilometer detection range we actually have enough range where we can get closer to the st louis and engage him uh, now that we're detected, we're going to shoot some HE at him. Maybe we'll get lucky and get a fire. Five and a half fire ch fire percent chance and uh, relatively low rate of fire. Four seconds isn't too bad, but it's a far cry from being absolutely amazing. And you can see here, we're just not adding up to damage. And we're getting a decent number of pen hits. Not a whole lot in the way of shatters, 792 damage. And this is the same problem that I ran into that with the, um, the same problem that I ran into with, with V25 in that, yeah, it can, you know, it, it has the ability to do some damage, but it's not nearly as reliable, in my opinion. I think the guns on Samson are a little bit better. Uh, granted, Samson's guns are also um, 
they're a little bit... I think it's got... It, I don't think. I know it has more. I think it still can only bring three to bear, but it just seems a little bit more reliable in the damage department. So at this point, uh, that St. Louis is on full retreat. We've got ourselves an Aurora. There's a South Carolina floating around. Really kind of hoping to get on the... <laughs> you can see how close it is. Trying to get some good torpedo hits off on this Aurora. Uh, I, I realize that this will upset our Russian overlords, but... Uh, well, they're going to have to deal with it. Suddenly detected, which means there's a Long Jiang here. Well, we're going to go ahead and engage him. And you can see here we're, we're getting in a destroyer versus destroyer fight, and we're not adding up huge amounts of damage either. Well, okay, 1,200 damage isn't too bad. Gun accuracy, kind of lacking overall. Man, he misses. Now, the real, the real hope for me was that... Uh, he wasn't going to see those torpedoes and alert that Aurora so that we could kind of spoil the Aurora's day a little bit, but I don't know if he does or doesn't. We're going to continue on going this way because that Long Jiang is going the opposite way and we should be able to get a pretty decent uh, flow here to try and, and get some torpedo hits off on the South Carolina. Plus, worst case scenario, nope, we ended up missing the Aurora. Boo. Worst case scenario, we can set ourselves up with smoke over here and get some pretty successful uh, gun hits off. But we do have to be very, very careful about what gets close to us. Okay, so the Long Jiang is in A now. We know that for a fact. And the reason why we need to be careful what gets close to us is because, well, there's always going to be a risk of, um, you know, running into that Long Jiang and having him get real close to our smoke. But, well, we're detected again, so you know what that means. He shows up, we pop our smoke, and this is really more of a, ooh, we got two torpedo hits, a three torpedo hits on something. Okay, was that the Aurora? Was that the South Carolina? What was it? I don't know. This Long Jiang makes the mistake of shooting his guns. Now, I'm not detecting him myself. Somebody else is actually spotting him for me. The Dresden, though, that is a different story. Okay, so it was the South Carolina that did that. We got a flood on him, so we're going to try and and get ourselves an additional uh, additional fire for added damage. <laughs> Blind firing into the smoke. That Long Jiang is nearby, and, and I'm not afraid of the Long Jiang. I'm really not. Some people would be, but the reality is, is he can't hit me with torpedoes, so it doesn't matter... If he comes close to me, it's just going to be a gun battle. I have help from a Kawachi and a Dirtski. And look at he comes in. And if you know this ahead of time, it's actually really easy to deal with it. Now, that is something that I do definitely want to launch torpedoes towards so that I don't end up eating, you know, damage from him. So we go ahead and we, we pop our uh, speed boost here to try and get out and away from this. And our dirt ski is flooding the sea with all sorts of torpedo magic. And you can see those torpedoes, <laughs> had those been able to hit him, which, by the way, those aren't the target that I was aiming for, but had those been able to hit him, uh, it would have been very, very, very close to doing a lot of damage. And, ooh! Oh! No. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> so close. Ooh! Oh no, those are deep water torpedoes, and you can tell by the icon, it is a round circle as opposed to a triangle, and uh, no threat there of actually getting taken out by them, but I did spot them quick enough for the Kawachi to take some corrective action and not eat all of them. Okay, so we got more torpedoes to launch here, <laughs> but we're not done yet. We also have a Long Jiang that we really need to take out. I don't know that we're actually going to be able to take him out. It's it's ridiculously hard to hit that guy. We got two kills. We're up to 55,490 damage. 908 points. Six minutes left. Oh, South Carolina. So close. Yet so far. He's basically dead. And this is a perfect example of where uh, the low tiers can be a, a smidge frustrating because at the higher tier, somebody would have poked him already and he wouldn't be able to get this heal off. We're going to go ahead and we're going to shoot. Doesn't matter if we get detected or not, but uh, okay, well, we'll throw some torpedoes out there and see what happens. 
And look at what shows up. Long Jiang at 5k away. Shooting at our Tenryu, who is surprisingly close to death. And the Long Jiang uh, deploys a smoke screen there, but ends up running out of it. Now, I think a large part of the reason for that is because he couldn't see what was going on. And here's a, here's a perfect example where those gun arcs are really annoying. 959 points to go. Oh my. <laughs> Everything is just slow enough, and this is like watching two people knife fight, but <laughs> they, they can't torpedo each other. He's so close to death. I'm in his smoke, or at least going to be getting up to a smoke. 700 hit points left. 300 hit points left. Oh. <laughs> we get the torpedo kill, and we get denied the fourth kill on the Long Jiang. Interesting little knife fight there at the end. Finished the battle with 61,482 damage, three kills, some defends, 1,311 base XP. Overall, you know, I think the V-25 is a much better ship to club seals in if that's what you're interested in doing. It's just a little bit more flexible in all the areas, but the grind through Long Jiang was actually quite a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.